why are complex numbers written with an exponential? And here we've got a complex number with real and imaginary, and we've got the two most common ways of writing that number. We've got the Cartesian representation, where we have the real and imaginary, A plus IB, and we've got the polar version, the amplitude with the angle, sometimes called the phase. Now, there are other ways of writing them, and one of which includes an exponential. So let's try to understand that way, because it's often confusing. Before we do, here's a third way of writing it with the amplitude and CIS, which stands for cos and then the i, the complex variable, with the sine. And we, this one's going to help us to understand the exponential version. To get to that, let's think about some properties of cos and sine that are well known. The derivative of cos equals negative sine, and the derivative of sine equals cos. We'll come back to those in a minute. But what is this exponential representation? So this one is r e to the i theta. This is the one that often causes people confusion. What is it with the exponential function? Because the exponential function is a function which grows with the variable. And how does that match up to complex numbers? So let's think about this exponential function. Let's think about in general, not just the e, but let's think about uh, other functions that are to the power of the variable. So let's plot some of them here. So let's think about one to the power of x. Well, one to the power x is going to be equal to a constant for all values of x. So this is just the straight line here. This is 1 to the power of x. What about 2 to the power of x? And we're starting to think, well, why is this complex number with e to the power of the variable? Um, so 1 to the power of x looks like this. 2 to the power of x looks like something that grows exponentially like this. So this would be 2 to the power of x. Uh, 3 to the power of x is something that is going to grow uh, even faster. So this is 3 to the power of x. And what is it that's so special about e to the power of x? So this is, uh, this is the variable here, if we think of that variable as x. What about e to the power of x? Well, e equals 2.7182. Uh, and then other decimal places. It's a very long number, infinitely long number. So this is halfway between, or not halfway, but it's between two and three. And so that is a function which is going to grow in between the ones that I've shown here. So this is e to the power of x. And why is it that we pick that special one to represent our complex numbers? And how is it that this growing function matches up with a complex number? Well, let's think about that special property. What is it about 2.7183 that makes it so special that we're going to pick that when we could have 1, 2, 3, or any other? Well, that is the value, 2.7183, that is the value where this function, the growth of this function, the gradient of that function equals the value of that function. So how we write that down in mathematics is we write that d dx of e to the x equals e to the x. It equals the actual value of the function. That's, the, that's what makes 2.7183 special. It's because the function, the that function, the actual value of that function equals the gradient of the curve at that point. And that's a very special result. And that is going to be very important in linking the complex number to this representation of e to the i theta. So let's start delving into this a bit more. We're going to use this property. So let's first of all think of uh, e to the i x. Uh, this is the complex variable in the power, e to the i x. So what is this? Well, let's start by writing it down in a general form. It, because it's a complex number, we can write it in Cartesian coordinates. So let's do this. It'll be two functions, an alpha function, which is a function of x, plus i times beta as a function of x. So we've got alpha and beta. We'd like to look into this a bit more and think about what alpha and beta, those functions, what they might be. Because we want to try and understand what this is. This is an exponential of a complex variable. Uh, it's hard to picture that. Is this one, is it a growing function like this? And that's often what confuses people. If we take the derivative of e to the ix, we will get that the derivative of, of, of uh, 
with respect to x of e to the i x, it'll be the derivative of the real part plus the imaginary variable times the derivative of the imaginary part. So this equation holds directly simply by uh, the linearity of derivatives. So this is what we have here. Now let's think about applying this property over here. So now we're going to evaluate this one. Well, using this property, it's just this value here is just going to be i times e to the i x. Now we're going to apply uh, simply by substituting in this definition here. Okay, so we, all we've got is i times this definition. So that means we've got i times alpha. So that's a complex number now with i times alpha. So I'm going to write that over here because it's got i times alpha x. And then there's going to be i times i times beta x. Well, i squared is negative 1. So we're going to have negative beta x. Okay, so that's by using this property, we get this, and by directly applying derivatives, we get this, so we can equate these terms. So now let's equate these terms. We've got the derivative of alpha equals negative beta, and the derivative of beta equals alpha. So can we think of functions for alpha and beta so that we can actually fill in this definition for e to the i x? And the answer's up here in the right-hand corner. We saw them before. They're functions that we know about. These derivative of cos is negative sign. That's this function here. If alpha equals cos, then this holds. And if beta equals sine, this is the negative beta. And the same thing holds here. The beta and the alphas are also are consistent with this definition here. So the, what we have is this exponential gives us, if we write it in Cartesian form, we can uh, see that the derivatives are going to satisfy the equation if alpha equals cos x and if beta equals sine x. And we can see, you should be able to see that these derivatives are going to continue. So if you take another derivative, then the cos and the sine will also satisfy that and so on because of this property of e to the x, this special property of that special number e being 2.7183 and that it's a derivative equals its value. So we've got all the derivatives satisfy this. So now we just, to complete it, we just need to make sure that the initial conditions hold. So e, let's check that. e to the i0, not theta, e to the i0, the initial condition, equals, well, e to anything to the power of 0 equals 1. So that's directly from this. And now we need to check that it holds for the cos and the sine. So we need to check if that equals cos of 0 plus i sine of 0. And of course, sine of 0 is 0. And, so, and cos of 0 is 1. So in fact, the initial conditions hold. So this equation, where e to the i x equals cos of x plus i sine of x, holds. And so we've found this function. We've found the definition of e to the i of x. And let's think about it now in Cartesian. We can plot it on a Cartesian coordinate. And that's the link to the complex numbers. So if we plot it here with the complex, the real part being cos and the imaginary part being sine, the magnitude of this is always 1 because cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. So here, as if we start with x equals 0, we're going to be at this location here uh, where the real part equals 1 and the imaginary part is 0. That's what this showed down here. And as x increases, we're going to move around this circle. And it's a circle of unit magnitude, unit real, uh, unit value of r. And so we're moving around the circle here as x increases. And so for, a, for e to the i x, you can represent every number in the complex plane that's on this unit circle. And then, of course, to represent all the other numbers in the complex plane, you simply multiply by a value of r, which gives you circles with all the different magnitudes that you could uh, want to cover the entire plane. So this is how we take a, a complex number which we're familiar with representing in Cartesian form and also polar form and now we can see that we can write it in this way with the exponential. That special value of e because of this derivative property enables us to write the complex number in this way and then we can use all the mathematics that we know about in terms of multiplying by exponentials. So if we multiply two complex numbers together, for example, then you're multiplying the gain and you're adding the phases. And everything comes from this ability to write the complex number in terms of the exponential. 
So if this has helped you to understand this topic, uh, give it a thumbs up, helps others to find the video. Um, check out the description below this video where you'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.